everybody and welcome to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we're working on a 2011 Opel Mariva and the customer complaint is it's hard to start on cold mornings. Now, I'm sorry but this car came from another shop and they changed a lot of parts, crankshaft sensor, exterior temperature sensor, the list goes on and on and on. Nothing fixed the car, so they brought it into my shop. I don't know if it's going to be hard or easy, but let's diagnose this together. It's a cold day today, and I just moved the car from outside to inside the shop. The engine is stone cold, so let's try to confirm the customer's complaint. I guess it's customer complaint confirmed. Now the next step, let's hook up a scan tool and see if there are any codes that can lead us into the right direction. Now let's hope there's something useful. Let's select Opel, 2011, Auto ID, that's the one. Let's select Engine and let's get the codes. Unfortunately, no codes present. I see this a lot, especially when cars come from another shop. You don't know the history, they might have cleared the codes, but in the end, today, it's not very helpful. Unfortunately, no codes present, but all is not lost. Remember when I told you guys about the power of visual inspection. The most powerful scan tool is not over here, but over here. Don't overcomplicate things and keep thinking simple. When I stepped into this car and cranked it over, I saw something out of the ordinary. In the next clip, I'm going to show you a picture of the dash and maybe you can tell me what's wrong in this picture. Now remember, the engine is stone cold. Did you see it already? Well, maybe not. In the next picture, we're going to take a closer look. And remember, this engine is cold. That gauge is telling us the engine is hot. Though I'm 100% sure this engine is stone cold. 
Now, although that gauge is showing us a high temperature, let's go into the scan data and see what temperature the PCM is reading. Now, as we could see in the scan data, the PCM is reading a temperature of 86 degrees, about the same as our gauge was showing us. Now, this reading is obviously wrong. This engine is cold. Now, if we want to diagnose this car any further, we've got to learn more about the way the PCM is reading the engine temperature. So, let's learn more about coolant temperature sensors. The coolant temperature sensor is placed in the engine block in a coolant passage. This sensor is used by the engine computer to determine the temperature of the coolant. This information can be used by the engine computer to adapt its strategy to the temperature of the engine. A coolant temperature sensor is an NTC thermistor. As we can see on the chart, this means when the temperature is low, the resistance is high. But when the temperature is high, the resistance of the sensor is very low. The coolant temperature sensor gets its 5 volt feed from the engine computer. It gets its ground from the engine block. Inside the computer, there's an internal resistor. The computer monitors the voltage drop across this resistor. As the temperature is very low, the resistance of our sensor is very high, and there's almost no path to ground and no current flow. This means the voltage at point B will be close to 5 volts, and there's no voltage drop across our internal resistor. As the engine warms up, the resistance of our sensor comes down, and a path to ground starts opening up, and current flow will increase. As the engine gets hot, there's almost no resistance anymore, and there's almost a direct path to ground. A direct path to ground means almost no voltage at point B. Now let's watch the voltage levels at point B as the engine warms up. As the engine is cold, the voltage level at point B is close to 5 volts. But watch what happens as the engine warms up. The voltage comes down. Now as the engine is warm, the voltage at point B will be very low, and the voltage drop across our internal resistor will be very high. And this is how the engine computer calculates the engine temperature. There are many ways to test a temperature sensor, but in this video I will be using a decade box. A decade box we can set to any resistance we would like. If we hook it up to the circuit instead of our sensor and our readings return to normal, we can rule out a problem in any other part of this circuit and start focusing our diagnosis on our temperature sensor. Now as we have learned, a temperature sensor is basically a variable resistor that changes under the influence of temperature. There are many ways to test a temperature sensor, but as a professional diagnostician, you want to diagnose a car as fast and as efficient as possible. That's why I'll be using this tool, a decade box made by Ditex. A decade box can be used to change the resistance of a circuit. When we hook it up to the wiring of our temperature sensor and change the resistance, the temperature readings should also change. If it does, we can confirm the integrity 
of our circuit and shift our attention towards our sensor. Quick, easy, and accurate, right? In five minutes, we confirmed the entire circuit is just fine. Our problem lies within our temperature sensor. So let's change it out for a new one and see if our car starts any better. New temperature sensor installed. Now the engine is still cold, so let's start it up and see 
if we have fixed the problem. Even though it's just a small part, this temperature sensor has got a major effect on engine performance. Can you answer the question, why, if this temperature sensor is reading hot, but the engine is really cold, this could cause an extended crank time or even a no start? When an engine is cold, a part of the injected fuel might condensate inside the intake or inside the cylinders. To compensate for this, the PCM must inject extra fuel. How does the PCM know the engine is cold? Exactly. But when the sensor is telling the PCM the engine is hot, but in reality the engine is cold, it is not going to inject that extra fuel at the cold start, causing the mixture surrounding that spark plug being too lean to ignite, causing an extended or even a no start. Let's take the old sensor we took from our car and let's compare its resistance to a known good brand new one. First we're going to make sure that both temperature sensors are exactly the same temperature. After that we're going to compare this resistance to this one. And if both temperature sensors are fine, which we know this one is, that both resistance readings should be very close. How a small part can have big consequences, right? Don't only rely on fault codes. Always use your common sense. Now, I don't know how much money was spent on this car in the other shop, but my fix only included some time and a 15 euro part. Now, if you like this video and if you want to learn more, please subscribe to my channel. And when you hit the little bell, you will get a notification each time I post a new video. Diagnosed Dan, fixed it again. See you next time, guys. How does the PCM know the engine is cold? Exactly. But if this 10 cents... Uh -huh.